Hey, everybody. How's it going? I hope you're having a lovely day. Today, I'd like to show you something that we're doing at Repair Preservation Group and also introduce you to a concept. That concept is something I called Linux Forum Man. Any of you familiar with Linux Forum Man? If you're using Linux and you're trying to figure out how to do something and there's a person that posts a thread and they have your exact problem and you get a little excited. It's like, wow, that person has the exact same problem I do. Maybe I'll scroll down and I'll figure it out. And then you'll see that there's 30 posts from all these other people that are having the exact same problem. And they said, I read the docs. I tried this different hardware. I changed the setting in my BIOS. I compiled this kernel module, whatever it is, and nothing fixes it. And then the original poster returns to the thread and he goes, hey, I figured it out. It's working now. Thank you. You can close the thread. And then all those other 30 people are like, hey, w w what happened? What'd you do? What'd you do? How'd you solve it? We want to know how you solved it. And he never comes back to the thread. The original poster never comes back to tell you how he solved its problem. It's infuriating. And it's been happening since I got my first version of SUSE Linux 8.1 that I bought at Best Buy for $80 because I didn't have the internet fast enough to be able to download a copy in 2002. And that's something that admittedly is present to some extent in the independent repair industry. You have a lot of people that will figure out how to fix something. They will bang their head against the wall for hours, days, and months trying to figure out a problem that everybody has. And when they finally figure it out, either A, they keep it posted in some private group where only five people see it, or B, they don't tell anybody at all. And I'm trying to change that about this industry. It's something I've been trying to change for the past 10 years. Every time I learn something, every time I figure something out, I share it with all of you in every format that I can. I don't say, okay, I'm going to share this with you, this, but like, I'm going to share 95%, but this little 5%, I'm keeping that for myself. I share all of it with you, and I want to encourage others to do that as well. And that's part of what I'm doing with Repair.Wiki. Now, many of you have said, where are the board repair videos? Why are there no more board repair videos? I've done about 600 board repair videos, 620 or so at this point. I'm trying to come up with different ways of disseminating information and getting it out there. And part of it is this project called Repair.Wiki. Now, iFixit has done an amazing job of making all different types of guides on how to repair consumer electronics available for free. They do a great service. But at the end of the day, they are focused a little bit more towards the beginner. And that means that they're not going to show you how to do some of the more difficult repairs that make things more economically viable. They may show you how to replace a $450 display assembly rather than a $72 LCD cell. They may show you how to replace a motherboard rather than how to fix a motherboard. And while these are good skills to have, and I value what iFixit is doing there, I would like to take it a little bit to the next level to ensure that more devices get repaired by taking popular devices and showing you how to do more complex repairs. If you have a device that's worth $500 and there's a repair that's going to cost $450, it's good to know how to do that repair, but at the end of the day, there's a very high likelihood that that device ends up in a garbage pan, a garbage pile, because it's not economically viable. Whereas if you could just fix the board with a 10 cent part, then it becomes a little bit more viable. So what I'm doing with Repair.Wiki is I'm trying to find technicians who are best in their class, best in their field, and get them to post solutions for very common devices on how to do repairs that make it a little bit more economically viable. And we've been doing that with the iPhone. So I wanted to thank Jesse Cruz from VCC Board Repairs for some of the contributions that he's made recently. And I wanted to share them with all of you. And I'll include a link to his uh, channel and his uh, website down below. This is for the iPhone 7. Look at how detailed these guides are. So on the left, you'll have a symptom or, or, or a problem, and on the right, you'll have what could be the potential solution for that problem. And there is a lot over here for the iPhone 7, like I'm talking about pages. And then for the iPhone 8, you have the exact same thing. Right over there for the iPhone 8, you got the exact same thing. For the iPhone 10, again, just lots, lots of stuff over there. For the iPhone 10s. Lots of troubleshooting information over here. iPhone 11, again, same deal. You got pages and pages and pages of quality troubleshooting information. When it comes to MacBooks, I would like to say thank you very much to Tim Herman of TCRS Circuit. I'll link to his website and his channel down below. He's been helping me fill in the MacBook section recently. So the, the I contributed about 95% of what you see here in the MacBook section. And this is uh, on repair.wiki. And he has been contributing a lot for the newer models, which, didn't, which admittedly did not have as much on the site. Uh, but now they are starting to get a lot more. So you'll see on some of these pages over here, we're starting to get information on the new ones. Some of the newer stuff we don't really have as much on, but he, he recently filled in the uh, MacBook Air section for the newer ones, like the A1932s. This is part of Tim Herman's work. This is amazing. Look at this. I mean, this is, this is, this is a good, like, 15 pages 
of troubleshooting information on how to do a complex repair so that instead of replacing a board that costs $500 to $800, you may be able to repair it, which makes the repair economically viable. And when it comes to graphics cards, because some of you have asked about graphics card repairs, I don't do graphics cards repairs, but Ahmed has been very generous with his time, and he has put a lot of information here on how to do graphics card repairs. So he has an AMD section, he has an NVIDIA section, in the NVIDIA section he goes over all the different rails that are common on these cards, and then specifically how to troubleshoot them with some sample schematics, which is really great stuff. And I'll link to this all down below. What I'm trying to do here is get rid of that culture in the repair industry, where when somebody figures out something, they do what Linux Forum Man does, when I'm trying to figure out why Jack Off Audio isn't working right at one in the morning, where they say, oh, found the solution to my problem, thanks, and they just ghost you. I would like the independent repair community to get a little bit more involved. And I am open to providing financial incentives for the best and brightest in the independent repair community to come forward and share their solutions on devices that have a large public interest in repair, meaning these are the devices that lots of people own with common problems. If you know of a device in the consumer electronics or business or the consumer electronics repair business that has a very, very high volume of repairs because it's a very common device that a lot of people have and a lot of people break it, I think that there is a great interest in making this information more readily available. And I understand that there is this idea in the business that if you make information available, you'll go out of business. I think that with this channel, I've disproven that to some extent, because as I've shared more and more information, this business has grown and grown and grown. Regardless of the fact that okay, maybe one or two people went to some other business that was cheaper because I taught them how to do it, at the end of the day, I think making people aware that these repairs are possible is something that's grown my business far more than just sharing information with others has shrunk my business. I think growing the size of the pie is more important than growing this, the percentage of the pie that you get access to. I'd rather have 3% of a giant pie than 20% of, of this. And that's what I'm trying to get people to do. Now, I understand that in the beginning, people are not going to be particularly open to, uh, to sharing things immediately or putting time into this if they have a lot of stuff to do. So if you are one of those top tier level experts, I am open to paying you for your time to produce these types of guides if they are done to a high standard of quality. I want this to be the norm. And at the end of the day, this is not simply something that will benefit the repair community. This is something that will benefit customers. If more repair shops know how to do more repairs, that means that more customers will get repairs that they otherwise wouldn't have gotten. Because when they walk into a shop, instead of hearing, no, we can't do that, they may be able to look at something like this and go, huh, maybe this is something we could take on. And if that happens more and more often, that means that consumers will have a, a, a greater respect for the independent repair industry. If they have a greater respect for the independent repair industry, maybe they'll actually try to get things fixed rather than throw them away. Sharing information at the end of the day is going to be good for the consumer, and it's going to be good for people who own these devices. And I'd like to just get rid of that culture that we have in our business where we have information and we, we hold a little bit of it for ourselves because we believe that our businesses won't be viable if we make it available. So do hit me up, lewis at fighttorepair.org, for devices that are very, very popular, for devices that a lot of people are looking to get fixed, for devices that break very often, and for devices that are where there is a genuine demand for it. I am open to providing financial compensation through Repair Preservation Group for individuals who are able to create content that is up to this standard of quality. And I hope that this content is made is useful to most of you. I have enjoyed doing these videos over the past seven years, but I'm looking for different ways to educate. I'm looking for different ways that are a little bit easier to index so that, you know, again, if you're just a receptionist at the store, is this a fixable problem or is this a mess? You're not watching 20 hours of video to figure it out. You could just look at some quickly centralized database to get an idea of how difficult it'll be. And also, if you're just somebody who wants to fix your own stuff, maybe it's good to have an easier way to start learning. I think this is going to benefit a lot of people, and I just wanted to say thank you very much to the people who've been contributing early on. Thank you to Ahmed. Thank you for the GPU guide. Thank you to Daniel Smullen for helping us organize this information and work on this project. Thank you very much to the individuals in the Open Repair Discord who have put in a lot of time and effort to administrate this wiki and get it moved to a better server. Thank you very much to Jesse Cruz at VCC Border Pairs for providing us with those amazing iPhone guys. Thank you very much to Tim Herman for a TCRS circuit for filling in a lot of the MacBook guides that I had not filled in yet. And thank you to all of you that make contributions that I haven't personally named because I don't know you. I really appreciate it. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.
I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.